Bible with me tonight and uh, to the book of First Corinthians. We go to Corinthians tonight. Huh? <laughs> we go to Corinthians tonight. Yeah, but while we're here, let's just do that. Okay? All right. That'd be something unusual, wouldn't it? <laughs> we have been most of this year in First Corinthians on Wednesday night. And tonight we will uh, wind up. I'm not going to do the entire uh, 16th chapter, um, but I hope you will read it at, at home. And as we, we talk tonight, I said it will be the very last of our, of our services in, uh, in First Corinthians. And uh, so as, as we look at it, First Corinthians chapter 16, beginning at verse 1, and we're only going to look at four verses. Then now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, but there be no gatherings when I come. And gathering is talking about collection. Mm -hmm. And when I come, Whomsoever you shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it be me that I go also, they shall go with me. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for the great privilege we have of opening your word. We pray tonight that you would be with us as we expand upon it. Father, we pray that when the service is over as we go, that we would, our lights will so shine that people would yes. ask, Sir, what must I do to yes. be saved? Grant it, Father, in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. So we come tonight to the conclusion of our, our study on 1 Corinthians, and as we, we look at it, uh, it has been a, a very enjoyable series for me, and I hope it has for, for you. But uh, in both the Old and the New Testament, we find one thing. We find that God is concerned about the collection, both in the Old Testament as well as the New. And so failure to, to follow the scriptural plan for money to provide for the Lord's work that will always bring on chaos. Every Christian, whether a pastor or some other church worker um, or attendee should be interested in, in the offering. Well, I knew it. Baptist preacher's going to always preach about the offering. <laughs> you know that? Uh, yeah, I, I majored in taking offering. <laughs> now, uh, but it, it, it's part of our responsibility and our pleasure. And so as we look tonight, we see six ideas that are mentioned in this passage that each follower of Christ needs to, to grasp. And first, here is the period of the collection. Well, when, when do you take the collection? Well, the Bible says, verse 2, upon the first day of the week, and that's it's Sunday. And so that's our, our day of worship and spiritual recuperation. It is a time for worship and, and giving. And uh, in the Old Testament, it was always in the Lord's Sabbath. And, uh, but in the New Testament, it's the Lord's Day. Now, followers of, of the Lord, Jesus, we're, we're not to bring our offerings to the, to the house of the Lord merely at our own convenience. But we are to bring them as the Lord says. And that period of time when Christians worship is, is, and giving provides for the, the, uh, the kingdom work throughout all the year. And, 
one of God's children gave only once a year. Say, the last Sunday of the year. Everybody brings in and, and, and gives you the offering. That could mean chaos and a <laughs> very um, major effort. Um, because it would create a chaos just trying to, to do the financing of God's work. You know, 11 months without any money, you know, is, uh, but still here in verse 2, we see the person of the collection. Who is the person of the collection? Every one of us. The Lord wants the giver, the almighty God to whom all things belong. See, God does not need our money. And uh, you say, well, you know, why are they always preaching about it if uh, God don't need it? You know, and I, I can remember, I don't know if anybody else has ever did this, but when I was, I was five, six, seven years old, along in there, that was a long time ago. And uh, in a last century. The, uh, I, I used to wonder about when they were talking about giving to the Lord. And the treasurer of our church was also the president of the bank. Mm -hmm. that. And uh, he, he was a big guy, and I knew people went to the bank and could get money from him and whatnot. And, but I wondered how Mr. McLeod carried that money to God. You know, I, because there was no airport nowhere around. So how did he go up there and give God that money? You know, and it, it was a while before I finally came to that answer. But I, I used to wonder, I said, we give it to God, but it's going to the bank on that Sunday. You know, and do it carry it Monday or Tuesday, you know, but it was just really puzzling. Uh, but the uh, the Lord wants to give her the Almighty God to whom all things belong. As I said, he, he doesn't need our money as, as such. But what he really wants is our whole service. Because you see, there is a real democracy in special giving. People are not saved in masses. They are saved as individuals. People also receive God's provincial care and blessing as individuals. Amen. And not in a, in a mass crowd. So people are to give as individuals. Every person should participate. And so, uh, well, where is the place of collection? Well, the Bible says, Malachi 3.10, that every one of you lay by him in stone, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. Now, let's think about that word storehouse. Now, the word storehouse, that's a biblical term, but it needs very careful consideration. In the Old Testament, it was, it was always a tabernacle or else it was the temple, but in the New Testament, it's the church. The storehouse for Christians today is the church. So we give in and through the church. That's the best way to bring honor and glory to, to God. Giving to others should be over and beyond what a person gives to the church. You know, we all know people that really need something. There's so many great organizations that we want to give to, you know, and uh, you know, there's some ministry you feel may have to, you know, uh, my, my good friend, He's with the, the Lord now, Bailey Smith. Uh, he had a great big church in Oklahoma, but he traveled all over the, 
the world preacher. And he, he just had a great ministry and uh, I'd give baby a dollar or two when I, when I could. But giving in and to the church is the best way to bring honor and glory to God. Mm -hmm. And so the tithe is first and then anything we give above that is, is an offering and uh, they are worlds of, of great organizations, very deserving and uh, but we give to those after we give our tithe. So when, what portion in, in verse 2 here, uh, what, what does God really tell them about? As God has prospered him, notice what the, the NIV version, it, it says this, in keeping with your income. Now the Old Testament was 10% minimum. But now, let me say this. Every New Testament example goes beyond the time. And so let me encourage you very strongly to, to study 2 Corinthians um, 8 and 9. And the 8th and 9th chapter of 2 Corinthians is what I'm always called grace giving. And uh, that was an expression of gratitude for, for what God has done through Jesus. And the emphasis is on generosity. And I believe the followers of Jesus should excel in the grace of giving. And I am so glad that Brooklyn Baptist Church follows that. And, uh, and some give when it, it would put a, a burden on them to do it. But your obligation is, is to God to, to do that, and God always uh, he honors makes it. a way. And uh, thank you for that. But he said, well, what's the purpose of the collection? You know, there are a lot of people, they don't really know what the collection does. So let me just name two right quick. First, giving should be done in order. There is an orderly and a systematic way of giving rather than a, a sordistic way of, of giving. Uh, well, you just give according to your own whims. Uh, giving should be done in order and it should be done honestly so that the Lord's work can be carried out according to his plan, yes. not to ours. You said, well, that sounds good, but how is the collection to be protected? Look at verse 3. It says, whomsoever you shall approve. What do you mean approve? Well, Christian people should have a, a method and a system by handling God's money. And this applies both to the collecting and the counting of the money. It also applies to the church budget. Now, let me say this. I'm sure y'all have all seen this by now. I have one rule. I'll never break it. I do not, under any condition, do I touch the altar. I don't, I don't. You never have. I don't, I don't handle it. I don't. I don't touch it. The closest I come to it is writing the date on the envelope, and somebody puts it in the envelope, and yeah. and that's the last time I see it. Yeah. And uh, so. Nor do you know what's in there. I, I have no idea what's in there. Uh, you know, and I. The most I do is I say I take a big envelope. And I write the date on it, and uh, somebody else dumps it in there, and uh, what they do with it is, uh, I don't really know, but uh, the, uh, and I couldn't tell you if we got one dollar or a hundred thousand. I would think we're closer to one than a hundred thousand, but, <laughs> but the, uh, I, I have no idea, and I've never wanted to know, and um, you know, 
But I have just <coughs> always had that that rule. I do not touch any money. You know, I've, I've heard all about the stealing preachers before I ever went into the ministry. So uh, I, I've never, ever have, have touched the offering other than picking up a plate and handing it to some, somebody. And I don't really like to do that. But spiritual gift or scriptural giving is a very distinct mark of a Bible believing Christian. Yes. And it's my plea that you follow God's plan in this matter. And with that, we were through with the book of 1 Corinthians. Here, you pray a little bit.